Hey there, it's Mr. Carson Bader. The time has come. APs, for your drawing guidelines and requirements, I'm going to have you start working on your work. Now that you've got your feet wet with some projects, here's the framework. Uh, if you come down the page here for skills of big ideas, I'm going to take you through all the steps and the requirements. Okay, we have have it broken down into three steps. We have the inquiry and investigation, where you investigate your materials, the processes, the way you make your art, what kind of tools and things you're using, and the ideas. Step two is the practice, experimentation, and revision. Final thing is communication and reflection. First step is inquiry and investigation. Uh, what's an inquiry? It's, it's, a, it's a way to ask yourself a question about visual arts. It's about the ways that you can ask questions about yourself and be introspective. So one way to come up with a question that could be sort of like a theme Okay, they don't like to use the word theme, but it's kind of like a theme. It's, it's an ongoing inquiry um, where you can answer some of these questions. Okay, so that's one way that you could come up with an inquiry or question that could be the theme for your artwork. Another way is just exploring different types of art materials. You can look at the principles of design, art movements, current events or any important theme that you think you would like to explore. Remember that the best art communicates a strongly connected idea, emotion, or message. My advice is to be brave about your ideas. You might think something at first is a good idea and then you kind of back out of it because you don't think it's a safe idea. So be brave, be yourself, choose something that is important, meaningful, or has an emotional connection to you, the artist. You are the product out there, okay? So you're going to have to kind of dive within to come up with uh, your inquiry for this project. Once you get an idea, you'll demonstrate it through the sustained investigation. And that just means a series of, of connected works that you're exploring uh, with the visual arts. And this is the part that's almost like it's the production part. So it's the majority of your time making projects. To be able to complete enough works, listen closely, projects we do every two weeks. Mm-hmm, two weeks. So you have to meet those deadlines. Um, now, if you do one project and it only takes you uh, one week, you have, you know, a little more time to, to do you know, your next project. Uh, but that's why communication is important, and we'll talk about that as well. Okay, what materials and processes do you think will work best to achieve your idea? Investigate lots of materials and processes. Anything that makes a mark is considered drawing. So even painting is considered a uh, drawing. Um, anything that makes any kind of mark Consider all the different tools that an artist uses. It can be conventional tools or unconventional tools that you're using to create your marks and your drawing. Take chances, make mistakes, and continue to revise your work. Um, what I've seen it commonly is I've seen that some students doing reviews of their AP portfolio were really disappointed that they only got like a three or four on their portfolio and their work looked absolutely incredible. But the issue was there was no, con there was no connection there. There was no emotional connection. There was no really connection to their, their inquiry or their idea. So I really want you to really consider and think about your, your inquiry and your ideas because that is just as important is being able to draw well, okay? So um, it doesn't really matter if you're able to draw well, it looks just like a photograph. If the drawing isn't speaking to the people that are looking at your work or it's not telling 
us anything about your work, you're not making that connection. That's not going to be successful. So just keep that in mind that you want an emotional connection to your work or message, okay? Do not throw anything away. It may be valuable later down the line. I'll mention this more than once. Um, they also don't want you to sign the work on the front just because of the way they lay things out and grade them. So you can neatly print your name on the back, but don't sign anything on the front. Use your own photos whenever possible to avoid plagiarism. Plagiarism is the practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as one's own. Plagiarism includes direct use of photos that are published in books and on the internet. If plagiarism is evident, your submission will be disqualified. So I think if you use your own photos, you'll avoid that problem completely. Um, you could certainly use like the a background sky or other things sort of as references, but you just want to be really careful about that. They can do reverse searches. And if they find that you just directly took someone else's work, you will be disqualified. So please don't do that. Use your own photos. Uh, the people who assess your work want to see how your ideas develop along the way. It should be like an artistic journey. Document your work with notes as you progress through each project. I would highly recommend uploading your picture when it's finished, along with detailed, the detailed uh, details and notes that they require, so that you don't forget. All right, so because who's going to remember six months ago what I was thinking when I created this um, and some of the challenge that were involved? So do that. I would just, as you're finishing each project, upload it. It can be edited to the very end. So just upload your stuff and then you can you can edit it and change it, delete it, add other pictures anytime you want to up till May 5th. So take clear photos, including work in progress photos and detailed areas of you know interesting details. So we'll talk about that as well. Some students got away with doing a lot less projects and still did very well just by talking and taking detailed little pieces detailed areas of their work. So those can count as secondary pieces as well. Okay, and as I just mentioned a few minutes ago, they're also looking to see that your written inquiry, okay, what you're trying to, your message or your idea, and the descriptions have a solid connection to your art pieces. This is called communication and reflection which is the last set of skills that are required in a successful portfolio. So you need all these three things to kind of have the glue to glue this whole thing together to do really well in your art portfolio. Okay, the experts will grade your work and will be looking to see that your written inquiry and descriptions uh, solidly connects your 15 pieces of practice, experimentation, and revision. Hmm. Um, so along with these 15 sustained pieces, you will choose your best five works. Um, and all of them can come from your 15 or you can have additional pieces if you'd like, but they should be your, your strongest pieces. In the past, they've been physical pieces that we actually mailed in, but with the situation right now, there's a good chance that they're all gonna be sent in digitally. You should be sharing your progress with me once a week minimum. We'll do this in several ways. Uh, this will be done through posting your work as in progress photos in your art journal, your flip grid, and Zoom meetings. Critiques, as difficult as they are sometimes, are really the most helpful tool for you to improve your work. So that could come from me, um, that could come from your classmates, but it is really important. Once your work is finished, there's really no way of us helping you improve until you create your next one. So communication is really important here for that, guys. Okay, and once again, College Board requests that you do not sign the work on the front. They want to judge fairly and 
So they just, for some reason, they just want to keep your, your name off the front. So just please sign it on the back. And your final deadline for all work is May 5th. Okay, that sounds far away, but if you do two pieces a month, you'll barely have enough pieces to finish. You'll have just enough. So keep that in mind. If I didn't mention it before, when you're thinking about your inquiry, yeah, I think I did. Um, no, I did see some, some students who were really disappointed in their grades because technically they were done incredibly well, but their idea wasn't really there. There was no emotion. They were just, you know, copying photos that they took of people. So make sure there's an idea behind, you know, we want to know about you and your work. So just keep that in mind. And we're going to get started this week on these. Um, and we'll start sharing ideas. And I'll put some sort of assignment on uh, to see where your inquiries are at. That's all for now.